want to make your paintings look more professional, I'm going to show you a cheap and easy way to build a floating frame for all the canvases that you paint right now. So my wife has asked me to frame this painting. Do you see it back there? The whale? Yes, I painted that a long time ago at a paint party for one of our friend's birthdays. I love this painting. It's probably my favorite thing I've ever painted in my entire life. So let's measure it, figure out how big it is, and get to building this frame. So let's say that this represents our painting. We know that our painting is 20 inches tall by 16 inches wide. But that doesn't actually tell us everything we need in order to get this frame built, because those measurements are only for the inside of the frame, because that's where the painting is going to sit. So what we need to know in order to measure is the outside of the frame, because you can't measure from the inside of a frame. There's nothing to grab onto, it can't be exact, and we want it to be totally exact. So what you need to do is actually really easy. You take this inside measurement, which is 16 inches in this case, and you add the thickness of the frame on both sides. So this frame is 3 quarters of an inch wide on both sides. 3 quarters of an inch times 2 is an inch and a half, so we're going to add an inch and a half to this 16 inch measurement, making the outside of the frame 17 and a half inches. And adding that inch and a half onto the 20 inch sides gives you 21 and a half inch on the other. Now that we have the dimensions for the outside of the frame, it's just a matter of marking them onto the wood and using our miter box to cut them by hand. Now if you don't know how to or don't remember how to use a miter box and a miter saw, there's a wonderful step-by-step -step explanation of the entire process in another DIY video of mine that shows you how to build a wooden organizer tray. I'll make sure to link that at the end of this video. At this point we just want to do a dry layout to make sure that everything fits the way it's supposed to and all the angles are correct. Now because we use the miter box, I know the 45s are right, and it looks like they are perfect. Very nice. Okay. Now, the thing that's going to make this look like it's floating is it's not going to be down all the way in the frame. It's going to be elevated. And the way we're going to do that is first we're going to place this in the frame. And you'll see there's a little bit of extra room around it that's absolutely meant to be there. This is a floating frame, so we want it to look like not only it's floating up, but it's floating inside of the frame. Uh, so what we're going to do is find out how much room is left in the frame. We're simply measuring this way. That is just over three quarters of an inch. That's actually perfect. And the reason it's perfect is because our frame material is three quarters of an inch wide. So by cutting out 12 inch strips of that, we can mount them inside the frame and that will push the canvas up that three quarters of an inch we need to make it look like it's floating. So being that the scrap pieces we just cut are going to be the things that are underneath the canvas itself, holding them in place, uh, they're going to be in shadow because they're inside and behind that canvas. So we're just going to hit them with some black spray paint to make sure they're completely invisible. Some time has gone by now and the black spray paint has all dried, so what we're going to do next is a bit of a glue up. We're going to put each of the sides of the frame with one of the black pieces against it, uh, glue them together and stack them all together and vice those all together, like this. I also added a giant weight on top of these just to make sure that everything was nice and flat. Okay, the glue is all completely dry and ready to move on. Now that that's the end of phase one of the glue up, now we need to take those apart and get them put together as the frame itself, which I'll show you just next. Now, we're only using wood glue for this. If you worry about that, go on to any one of the millions of people on YouTube who've already done the test. The glue and the wood bond together stronger than the wood does to itself, so the wood fibers that are grown together in nature are actually less strong together than the bond that's created by wood glue, um, which I think is crazy, but absolutely true. And this isn't going to be something that we're going to be using all the time. It's going to hang on a wall. So wood glue is plenty strong for this. Uh, let's get to it, shall we? After checking to make sure that everything is nice and square, I'm going to take a second just to lay the canvas inside, check the spacing, and then drill out the four holes for the mounting screws that will attach our frame to our canvas. Then we're just going to give this whole thing a little while to dry. 
Phase two of our glue up is now done, so it's time to remove the clamps, hit the whole frame with a little bit of sandpaper just to make sure all of the sharp edges are broken and everything looks nice. And then I'm gonna take it outside and spray it with a clear coat just to add a little bit of protection. So in full disclosure, I busted out this block plane also to try on rounding the corners. I've never used one before and it actually was awesome. I'll definitely be coming back to this and using it in future videos. Now that the three coats of enamel are all dry, it's time to attach the frame to the canvas and add mounting hardware so that we can hang it. In order to make sure that the canvas was centered when I added the mounting hardware, I just cut out some really simple cardboard spacers and added them around the sides, then flipped it over, added the screws, and it looks like it's coming along really well. So the canvas has been framed and hung in the corner of our dining room. It looks absolutely amazing. If you like this project and you want to do some of your own, go check out Burke Makes Stuff. We have lots of simple, inexpensive, easy projects that you can absolutely do. If you need some advice for one, I would watch that one right there. And if you don't like that one so much, definitely watch this one. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, which would be absolutely insane, make sure to click this right here. I'll see you next time, Wednesday, 4 o'clock.